Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, a debate about the death penalty picks up pace in DR Congo after 37 people, including six Westerners, have earlier been condemned to death in connection to a failed coup back in May. Also, Zimbabwe follows Namibia in trying to feed some of its communities by announcing plans to slaughter hundreds of wild element, ele elephants and they face pushback from local conservationists. And health experts warn that the intense flooding West Africa has seen this year has ratcheted up the risk of snake bites in the region. About 15,000 people in Africa are killed by snake bites every year, a number that could be drastically reduced with better access to anti-venom. The WHO is trying to tackle this. But first, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, a series of death sentences in a recent coup trials causing a stir both in and out of the country. 37 people, including six Westerners, have been condemned to death in connection to a failed coup back in May. The affair has also opened up the debate on the use of the death penalty. Our Emmett Livingston tells us more. The sentencing to death of 37 people in DR Congo is causing a diplomatic stir. Belgium's foreign minister expressed her deep concern following the recent condemnation of Belgian citizen Jean-Jacques Wando in connection to a failed coup on May 19th. Wando is a security expert who worked for DR Congo's intelligence agency. Congolese authorities accuse him of being the mastermind behind the coup attempt, but his lawyers argue that the evidence is extremely flimsy. The Belgian minister called her Congolese counterpart to discuss the case and also summoned the Congolese ambassador. The European Union said that it condemned the death penalties handed down. It also stressed the right to a fair defence and said that the rule of law was on the back foot in DR Congo. Three Americans, one British citizen and a Canadian have also been condemned. The rest of those sentenced to death are Congolese. The verdict has triggered a reaction from Congolese rights group The Voice for the Voiceless. We are very, very worried because this sentence is extreme. Because apart from the death penalty, there are many other sentences that can be applied in certain circumstances. But in this case, it feels like the death penalty is being handed down lightly. That's why, in the interest of DRC, we have asked the Congolese authorities to commute this death sentence to life imprisonment. DR Congo had long maintained a moratorium on capital punishment, with death penalties automatically commuted to life imprisonment. But the government lifted this moratorium in March, citing the need to deter traitors in the army and urban delinquents. Since the moratorium has been lifted, some 80 people have been sentenced to death. No one has yet been executed, but rights groups fear that death penalties could be carried out in the future. Well, Zimbabwe has followed Namibia in announcing plans to slaughter hundreds of wild elephants and other animals in a bid to tackle the fallout from severe regional drought. The plan is to distribute the meat of 200 elephants to communities whose food security has taken a hit this year. Nyasha Chingono brings us more from Hirari. It's a tough balancing act dealing with conservation issues and a growing elephant population in a drought year. Zimbabwean authorities have announced that they will kill 200 elephants to feed hungry communities across the country. Uh, we are now sounding like a broken record that we are, we, our elephants or our animals are too many. We have more than what we need. We have more than what our ecosystem can support. So it's also one of the measures to make sure that at least we also do with that, uh, that, that problem. And uh, at the same time, communities also benefiting. From, uh, from the meat that will be distributed. The Southern African country has one of the largest elephant populations in the region. It has 85,000 elephants, but parks officials say it can only contain 55,000. This has caused the animals to come into constant conflict with humans. Parks officials say 30 people have been killed by animals to date. Wildlife management is science-based, it's evidence-based. There's overwhelming evidence that the numbers that we have are not sustainable. It's a disaster waiting to happen. Wildlife activists warn that the curling of elephants would lead to more poaching. 
Yasha Chingona there for us. Now, Gavi, the Global Vaccine Alliance says that it will buy 500,000 doses of MPOX vaccines to help African nations battling the latest outbreak, which the World Health Organization declared a global health emergency. Since the beginning of the year, there have been over 25,000 confirmed MPOX cases, 723 related deaths, most of which are in DR Congo. Now, so far, it's only received about 250,000 vaccine doses, most of which have been donated by the EU and the US, which is just a fraction of the 3 million doses estimated to be needed. Kenya's athletics, known for its world-class distance runners, faces a tough threat due to budget cuts affecting its anti-doping efforts. Now, this could jeopardize Kenya's participation in international competitions, including the upcoming 2028 Los Angeles Olympics. Our correspondent, Livia Bizo, brings us more. Kenya's anti-doping agency is facing a huge crisis. It needs the equivalent of 1.5 million euros in order to be able to operate properly. But this year, it's only received 10% of that amount. The national government has said that these cuts are a direct result of the 2024 finance bill having been withdrawn because of nationwide protests. But the impact of these cuts is already being felt. The agency has said that it hasn't been able to conduct any anti-doping tests since the beginning of July, so before the 2024 Paris Games took place. The anti-doping agency in Kenya was created in 2016. It was created after the national team narrowly escaped a ban from participating in the Rio Olympics because of a series of doping scandals. Since then, the agency has been working incredibly hard to repair Kenya's image on the international stage. But the agency's chief has said that all of this hard work is now hanging by a thread because of these cuts. He also warned that the stakes have never been higher. Kenya is expected to host the Football African Nations Championship in February. But this ongoing uh, doping scandal could prohibit Kenya from hosting any international sporting events. Olivia Bizo there for us. Now, after weeks of severe floods in Nigeria's northeast, the government's warned that 11 more states may be at risk following the release of water from a dam in neighbouring Cameroon. The deluges that have hit the country this month alone have impacted hundreds of thousands of people and it comes as the whole of West Africa experiences some of the heaviest flooding it's seen in decades. Now, the WHO, the World Health Organization, warned that one side effect of climate change induced flooding is a rise in snake bites. They kill tens of thousands of people every year. Sub Saharan Africa has around 314,000 snake bite cases a year and around 15,000 deaths, but faces a critical shortage of the treatments needed to bring those numbers down. Now, the World Health Organization is ramping up the availability of antivenoms for the worst affected sub Saharan African regions. And for more on this, I'm joined now by David Williams, who's a specialist on snake bites and snakes from the WHO. Um, David, thanks so much for making the time to speak to us. First of all, can you just elaborate a bit more about the scale of the problem and what the WHO's focus is in Africa when it comes to improving access to, to anti-venom? Sure. So snake bites are a really big problem in sub-Saharan Africa. Every year, there's some 200 to 315,000 people uh, are estimated to be bitten by venomous snakes, and somewhere between 15 and 20,000 of them die, and about three times more than that are left permanently disabled. Now, right at the moment, with the events that are happening in Nigeria, it's happening in what we call the carpet viper belt. These are a small species of viper that are very, very common in northern and northeastern Nigeria in neighbouring Cameroon and Chad and Niger. And with all this water on the ground, just as people have got to go somewhere, snakes do too. So this brings them into direct conflict with each other. And our colleagues who are working in Nigeria are reporting that there are hundreds of more cases of snake bites. And in fact, there's been a, a chronic shortage of antivenom such that the government has just had to source an extra couple of thousand vials um, on an emergency basis. 
Now, unfortunately, this is something that happens all too often. So WHO really has recognised the need to try and look at how we can make antivenom supply more sustainable and ensure that the products that people have are safe and effective and they're in the right places to be used when needed. And so, so how are you are you doing that? I mean, it, it, and and is what you're trying to address some of the some of those issues that were made clear during the pandemic about the cost of Africa's difficulty in providing its own or, or, or producing its own medical supplies? So exactly, I mean, it's really important that countries have their own capacity. Unfortunately, with the production of things like antivenoms, we find that. Many parts of the world struggle. And if you were going to build a new antivenom production facility today, anywhere in the world, it might take seven to 10 years to get it up and fully running. And of course, we can't have people continue to suffer in that time frame. So we have to find alternatives. We're working with existing manufacturers to try and improve the quality and the safety profiles of the products that they have and also so that they can increase their production. Um, we've developed a number of different products to help research um, teams, antivenom manufacturers and regulators understand the pro products much better and be able to, in future, design and develop new products that will better meet Africa's needs. Um, and of course, we're talking to governments at the moment about the possibility of pooled procurement for antivenoms. Um, governments banding together, working with WHO to secure supplies of products that we've already evaluated and found to be safe and effective David? and making sure that they're distributed to the right places. Thank you. David Williams there uh, speaking to us from the WHO. That's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us, though. Do so again. Till then, take care.